let's work out how much radiation we need to actually blow stuff off the surface of an object. So let's imagine we have a gas cloud, which because it's near a exploding star is probably very hot and so ionized. So it will consist mostly of protons and electrons. And let's bombard it with some electromagnetic radiation. Now some of the radiation will go straight through, but some of the photons will get close to a charged particle. So if you have an electromagnetic wave coming close to a charged particle, an electromagnetic wave is an alternating electric and magnetic field, which will cause the charged particle to alternate up and down. The ones that wiggle most will be the ones with the smallest mass, i.e. electrons. So by and large it's electrons that are going to interact with the photons. Because it's jiggling up and down it will radiate. So what this means is that some of the radiation will go straight through, but a lot of it will make the electrons jiggle and will be re-radiated in different directions. So it might come out all sorts of directions. Now we can work out what fraction of the light is actually absorbed. So if you do this electromagnetic calculation, you can work out how close a photon has to get to an electron to actually interact with it. And it turns out that you can treat each electron as being a target with an area called the Thomson cross-section, so sigma t, which is a whopping 6.7 by 10 to the minus 29 square meters. So that, if you like, is how big a target every electron is going to be. And if a photon lands within that target area, it will get scattered off. Whereas if it misses and goes somewhere over here, then it will continue straight through. So that's telling us what fraction of the photons will actually bounce off. How is that related to force? Well, the photons that come in will have a certain amount of momentum. The photons that come out are in all directions, so they have randomized momentum, which average to zero. So what you're doing is your, your cloud of gas is getting rid of momentum. Now the way you get rid of momentum is by applying a force. The momentum of the photons, there must be a force from the gas on it, and that momentum will be transferred to the photons. So you're losing light momentum and gaining acceleration of the particles. Now we know that force is the rate of change of momentum. So if you work out how much momentum, the total flux of momentum that's going to hit the gas cloud in a second, that will be equal and opposite to the force the gas cloud is applying to the photons, and so it's going to be the same as the force the photons are applying to the gas cloud. So, how much momentum does a, is a stream of photons hitting something? Well, according to relativity, the momentum of a stream of photons is equal to the energy of the stream of photons divided by the speed of light. Now we want the amount of momentum hitting per second, so that's going to equal to the amount of energy hitting per second divided by the speed of light. Energy per second per unit area is called flux, and we know how to calculate that. Uh, so the flux of energy, that's the amount of energy per unit area per unit time, is equal to the luminosity of the white dwarf or whatever, divided by 4 pi d squared. So what's the force on one electron? It's just going to be this times the Thomson cross-section. And it's also got to be divided by the speed of light, because the momentum flux is energy divided by speed of light. So the force on one electron, rather than the flux, that's now force, is going to be this. Now we can compare that to the gravity. If the force and radiation is more than the gravity pulling something down, the gas will take off and fly away. So what's the gravitational force? Well, electrons don't weigh much, so there's not much gravitational force on that. Most of the gravity is going to be applying to the protons. We're assuming this is hydrogen, so just electrons and protons. So in principle, the radiation could blow the electrons away and leave the protons behind. That won't work in practice because you'd have negative and positive charges which attract each other. So the electrons are pushed afterwards and they'll drag the protons along behind them like a chain around their legs. So the gravitational force we need, so force from gravity, is given by the usual Newton's law, so it's g mass of the star or white dwarf times the mass of a proton 
over the distance squared. Now we can set these two equal to each other and we can rearrange to find what the luminosity is that's needed to blow things off. The first thing to notice is that both terms have a d squared, 1 over d squared in them. What this means is distance doesn't matter. So if the radiation is strong enough to blow things away, it will blow things away whether it's one metre away or a million kilometres away. Seems a bit weird, but then I guess the amount of radiation goes down as d squared and so does the gravitational force. They both go down by the same amount. So when you're a long way out, the gravity force is very weak, but the radiation is very weak, but they're still of equal size. So the critical value is when these equal each other, which gives you L equals 4 pi g m m p c over the Thomson cross section. This is called the Eddington luminosity, L. Eddington, after the British astronomer called Arthur Eddington, curiously enough. And this is telling you if something has a luminosity more than that, it will be able to blow at least pure hydrogen off the surface by pure radiation pressure. And if you do the calculations for these classical novae, look at their luminosities and the masses, it turns out they are well above this. So in fact, radiation is probably what's driving the gas out.